Let's talk about PageRank, one of the most important uses of link analysis. Now we've talked a lot in information retrieval about using the overlap between the query and the document in terms of words, and we talked about TF-IDF counts, but there's more than just word overlap that tells us a page is good. And one instinct is that a page that's very popular is a good page. How do we measure popularity? Well, one simple measure might be just look at who gets pointed at a page that's pointed to by lots of other pages. That's probably a good page. And one way to do that is to use link counts. We'll just count the number of links to a page, and maybe we'll combine that with the text match score. So you can imagine two ways of using link counts to simply measure the popularity of a page. One is the undirected popularity of a page. Undirected popularity is also called degree. Degree is just the number of in-links plus the number of out-links, the total number of links related to a page. So here's a page, call that page B, and B has five. In, it has three in-links and two out-links, so it's a total of five links. So that's the degree of B. B's degree is five, and we could use that as a page score. Alternatively, we might just choose to use the number of in-links. If people point to me, maybe I'm important. So we could use the number three, the in-links, as a kind of directed measure of popularity. Either of these is fine. Now the problem with simple link counting popularity is that it's very easy to spam. And this is true whether we use the degree of a node, the total number of in-links and out-links, or just the number of in-links. Let's look at a question about this. So the intuition of PageRank is, instead of just counting the number of in-links and out-links, we're going to weight a link as more important if it comes from a page that's more important itself. And here's a graphical representation of this idea. Um, here E has a lot of links. It's got six links coming in and some coming out, whereas um, C only has one link coming in. But C's one link coming in is from B, a very important page. And so the intuition of PageRank is we'd like to measure not just how many links come in, but who the links are from. And if a link is from a much more important page, we're going to weight that more importantly. And we're going to come up with an iterative algorithm for measuring the importance of a page and then passing this importance along the links. So imagine a browser doing a random walk on web pages. We'll start at a random page, and at each step, we go out of the current page along one of the links on the page echo probably. So if a page has uh, three links with probability one-third, we'll take the first link, and probability one-third, we'll walk along the second, and probability one-third, we'll walk along the third. And the intuition of PageRank is that in the steady state, after a lot of walking around, each page has a long-term visit rate. And we're going to use this as the page's score. So the long-term visit rate, we're going to use this as the score, and that's going to be called the page rank of the page. Now, just a random walk isn't quite good enough because the web is full of dead ends. If you do a random walk and you get to a page, and imagine the page, here's a node C, and C has no outlinks, just inlinks, and so if you randomly walk away, we can't walk away from C, we're stuck in C. So we're going to add one more thing to our random walk. And that's called teleporting. Here's how teleporting works. When we get to a dead end, we just jump to any random web page. Whatever the number of pages in the entire collection is, the whole web if it is, we just jump to one of those random pages. If we're at a non-dead end, with probability 10%, let's say, we still jump to a random web page. But with the remaining probability, the 90% probability, we'll go out on a random link. And that 10% is a parameter that we'll call alpha. So Teleporting, if we're at a dead end, we jump to someplace random. If we're not at a dead end, we still might jump to someplace random or we'll follow a random outlink. So now we've modified our random walk to solve the problem of dead ends. So teleporting means we can't get stuck locally, and it also lets us compute a long-term rate, the page rank at which any page is visited. To see how to compute this, we're going to have to start with Markov chains. So now a Markov chain has a set of states, n states, and a transition probability matrix, an n by n transition probability matrix P. At each step in a Markov chain, we're at one of the states, and the uh, entries of P, P sub i j, tells us the probability P of j given i. The probability that if we're in state i, we're going to go next to state j. So here we're in state i, and P of i j says, here's the probability that we're going to go to state j. So if we look at i, we look at all the links out of i, those probabilities must sum to 1. So the probability um, for a given i of all, the, of all the j's we can go to, those sum to 1. It's a probability conditioned on i. 
So let's look at an example. Here's a little, a little Markov chain. So we have three nodes, A, B, and C. So if we're in A, the probability of going to B is 0.5. The probability of going to C is 0.5. If we're in C, we're definitely going to go to A. And if we're in B, we're definitely going to go to A. So everything sums up to 1. The, the prob given A, the probability of going to B is 0.5 and C is 0.5. That sums to 1. And the other two also sum to 1. So we can build a little transition probability matrix. So here's um, A, B, C, A, B, C. So if we're in A, the probability of going to A in the next step is zero. There's no self loop here on A. If we're in A, the probability of going to B is 0.5. There's that. And the probability of going to C is 0.5. There's this, and so on. So we can fill out that probability matrix. And we're going to be using this kind of transition probability matrix to talk about page rank. So a Markov chain is an abstraction of a random walk, and we're going to use it to talk about the random surfer surfing the web. So each state of our Markov chain is going to represent one web page, and the transition probability will represent the probability of moving from one page to another. And we can generate this transition probability um, matrix P from the adjacency matrix of the web graph. And the adjacency matrix just has one if two pages uh, are linked to each other and zero if they don't. So more formally, if we're at some node in the web and the node has no outlinks, the random surfer will teleport and the transition probability to each node in the entire n node graph is 1 over n. So if there's n pages on the web and we're at one page at a dead end page, then with probability 1 over n, we'll go to any of the pages in the whole web. But if a node does have outgoing links, let's say it has k, k greater than 0 outgoing links, then with some probability alpha, alpha between 0 and 1, the surfer will teleport to a random node. And the probability, since um, there's n possible nodes in the web, is alpha over n. And with the remaining probability, 1 minus alpha, we'll take a normal random walk. And we said that there's k outgoing links from this particular page. And so with that probability, 1 minus alpha, um, we'll, we'll, we'll take 1 over k of those for each of the possible k outgoing links. So let's suppose we had the adjacency matrix of the web graph. So A sub i j in this matrix is 1 if there's a hyperlink from page i to page j. So just a 1, 0 matrix expressing the structure of the web. 1 um, between i and j if there's a link from i to j. Now here's how we're going to derive our transition probability matrix P. If node i is a dead end, then its row, the row of the A matrix, will have no 1s because the, there's a 0 um, the, there are no outgoing links, so there are no ones in its row. So if that's the case, we're just going to replace each cell with 1 over n. So the, one of, the probability for, for that node of going to any place on the web is 1 over n. For any other row, so rows that do have outgoing links, we're going to proceed as follows. First, we're going to normalize, so we'll divide each one in A by the number of ones in its row. So if there's a row that has three ones, we'll turn them all into one-thirds. So we're getting a, a probability matrix here. Now we're going to multiply that by 1 minus alpha. So if it's probability 1 minus alpha, we're just going to go to a random outgoing node from on our link. Take one of our random outgoing links. And now um, we're going to add um, alpha over n to every entry of the matrix. So with probability alpha over n, we're going to go to some other random place. Let's look at an example. Here we have another little sample of the web, uh, a little mini web with only three nodes node 1, node 2, and node 3. And the adjacency matrix A for this uh, little example will have from node 2, we can get to node 3 and node 1. From node 1, we can only get to node 2. And from node 3, we can get to node 2. So here's our adjacency matrix. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So from node 2, we can get to nodes 1 and nodes 3. From node 3, we can get to node 2 and so on. Now let's consider computing a, the transition probability matrix from this uh, adjacency matrix. And let's start with the simple case where alpha equals 0, meaning there's no teleporting. So in that case, all we're really doing to compute P is we're going to normalize A into a probability matrix. So each row sums to 1, because the outgoing nodes from each node must, must be a probability. We're, we're uh, going to each link with its probability. 
So this row is already normalized. This first row is already normalized. And here, we, and the last row is normalized. So we just need to normalize this and turn all those ones into 0.5s. So there is our um, alpha equals zero um, probability transition mate, transition probability mate. So there's our alpha equals zero transition probability matrix. Now the more interesting case, of course, happens when we have some other alpha. So let's think about a different alpha, alpha equals 0 0.5, where we do have a possibility of teleportation. So now let's look just at this first row and we'll recompute that for alpha equals uh, 0.5. So how do we compute that for the first row? We said with probability alpha, we're gonna teleport to um, any place on the web. And there's, there's three nodes in this little mini web, n equals three. So with probability alpha, um, this vector will be one over n, one over n, one over n. With probability one minus alpha, we're gonna go to each node with its outlink probability. And we, we can only go from node one to node two, and we do that with probability one. Um, so with one minus alpha, we're gonna take that set of transitions. And alpha we said is 0.5. So that's um, 0.5 um, times this vector plus 0.5 times this vector. And that's gonna be 1 sixth, 2 thirds, and then 1 sixth. So that's the, gonna be the first new row of this vector. Um, let me clear that off. And sure enough, 1 sixth, 2 thirds, 1 sixth. So, um, and we do the same computation for each of the two rows. So here's the new transition probability matrix, assuming a 0.5 teleportation probability. So we've introduced the intuition of page rank, talked about Markov chains, and how to think about the transition probability matrix, and how to compute that with the teleportation probabilities. In the next section, we'll look at actually the computation of page rank itself.